This is a dog bowl. And this is the smartest dog bowl on YouTube that I built because I have a problem. Recently, I've been teaching our son how to take care of our animals, primarily how to feed them every morning so they have something to eat. However, our son has decided that it's not only fun to feed our animals, but to also play in their food when it's in their food bowl. And clearly, I don't want him doing this because it's a little gross and I don't want him to get between our dog and our food. In addition to that, our giant Maine Coon cat has decided that he's also developed a taste for dog food. So this got me thinking, what sort of system can we design to make sure that only our dog is the one who could get at her food in the food bowl? And if you look online, there are a million different options for smart animal food bowls, right? But what fun is it to buy when you can build? So with that in mind, let's get into designing the smartest dog food bowl on YouTube that will keep our sun out as well as our giant cat. So the first obvious problem that we need to solve is a lid for this container, something that will will open and close to keep unwanted guests out of the dog food. So I think the best way to do that will be to use a servo motor. So servo motors are really cool for a few reasons. This one is a particularly beefy one that has a 20 kilogram rating, but these servo motors allow you to provide what's called a PWM input into them along with power and ground. And then we can precisely control the rotation of the top of this thing using a microcontroller. But as you can imagine, just using a microcontroller in combination with the servo here isn't enough. We need something to detect when our dog is in front of the food bowl, right? That's where this tiny little sensor will come in really handy. And so what one of these little sensors does is use this sensor right here to send out a light beam, usually infrared, hit an object, and then measure how long it takes for that light beam to return to the sensor. So you can imagine how this will be really effective to mount on the dog bowl so that we can detect when something is in front of it. As you can imagine though, there's still flaws with that design. We can't just rely on something being in front of the bowl. We have to know that our dog specifically is in front of the bowl. So to do that, we need some sort of identifier on our dog that can be detected by the bowl and then open accordingly. But this got me thinking, what if we use computer vision to recognize our dog when she's in front of our bowl? Then using a Raspberry Pi, we can do this with a standard webcam. This will allow us to first recognize our dog in front of the bowl, then use the time of flight sensor to understand when she's still in front of the bowl or if she's moved away. So I think we have all the primary electronic components that we need, but now we need to start thinking about the mechanical components to actually make this thing open and close. Now, one easy way to do this would just to be to mount the servo near the lid and have the lid open and close sideways following the direct motion of the servo. That way, no translation of movement would be required. But I'm actually not a huge fan of that solution because it would mean that the servo would have to be mounted directly near the rim of the bowl, which would just make for a clunkier design overall, I think. We can keep this design pretty streamlined if we mount the servo in the bottom of the bowl and then use some simple mechanisms to translate the motion of the servo to move the lid. My first idea here was to use a basic cable mechanism that was attached to the servo horn to pull the lid shut when the servo turned. Some quick back of the napkin math allowed me to understand how much cable I was going to need to open and close the lid enough to allow our dog to get into it. And one 20 hour print later, we have the basic shell of this smart dog bowl. I then designed in a really basic torsion spring mechanism that allows the lid to want to open by default. Then when the cable is pulled, it will be pulled shut by the servo. So it turns out this design wasn't exactly the best. The cable was mounted far too close to the actual hinge here. Um, because I wanted to keep this as compact as possible. And because of that, it takes a ton of force to pull this lid shut because the attachment point is so close to the pivot point. So because this didn't work, we're not gonna linger on it, we're gonna be good engineers, and we're gonna iterate on this design. So what I'm gonna try to do next is design a push rod assembly. And while that might be slightly more complex than the design that I have here, I think it will be much better at actuating this lid up and down 
using the servo to directly connect to the lid. So while the servo moves, it will actually have a linkage that moves this lid up and down accordingly. So let's jump into designing this new mechanism and see how it works. So if you're interested in getting started with 3D printing and 3D modeling, but you don't have a 3D printer yet, or you're not sure if it's a hobby that you really wanna take up, that's where today's sponsor, JLC 3DP, will come in perfectly for you. JLC 3DP is a professional printing service that allows you to easily upload your 3D files to their website, get instant quotes, and select from over 20 materials, whether it be simple PLA or more exotic materials and tougher materials like nylon. And one of the biggest reasons why I was excited to partner with JLC 3DP is that they offer some of the most competitive pricing starting at 30 cents with coupons up to $70 for new users. So just got my parts in from JLC 3DP. Let's pop them open and see how they look. So immediately I could tell that these parts were packaged really, really well opening up the box. Every single part was individually wrapped along with supporting foam in the box to ensure that nothing broke in transit. And I mean, come on, look at the surface finish of these resin printed parts. They're so smooth you can't even tell they're 3D printed. If you're interested in giving JLC 3DP a try, you can find a link in the description. JLC 3DP, your idea perfectly printed. All right, let's get back to the build. I had to get some updated measurements, which require getting up close and personal with my dog when she was using the bowl. There is a point in every project where I just wonder what my neighbors think when they look through my glass garage door at what I'm doing in here. I could then model the joints in Fusion 360 to make sure that I had the appropriate length linkages and there were gonna be no contact interference. With this basic mechanism done, it was time to move on to designing the computer vision system that was going to be the bread and butter of this updated bowl design. Here, I just used an open source library called OpenCV on my Raspberry Pi to take the camera input and then identify my dog, which you can see here, a green box is drawn around her when it recognizes she's in the frame, to then open and close the servo once she's close enough. Here you can see when the system recognizes her and draws the green box around her, it will drive the servo open and closed to allow her to get into her food bowl. It was only after I verified that all these things were working together before I attempted another 20 hour print and started to assemble the system again. I could then print the bottom plate and get the servo mounted to these tabs here. Once I had the push rod attached to the servo, I could then use some foam tape to attach the circuit boards for the microcontroller and the Raspberry Pi. Note, I didn't design in specific mounting holes for that because I wasn't sure the overall configuration that all the components were gonna end up in. The camera arm could then be assembled before finally putting in the Raspberry Pi next to the microcontroller. If you're wondering what those big metal fins are on the top of the Raspberry Pi, these are heat sinks because this thing actually generates a ton of heat when it's running a computer vision algorithm like the one I'm using. If you really wanted to run this thing for a long time, you'd probably have to design in some sort of fan port to keep this thing cool. I could then pop the shell over all the electronics and add the camera before it was time to attach the time of flight sensor to the front. You'll notice that both the time of flight sensor and the camera are angled strategically to allow me to get the best view of my dog when she approaches the bowl. I wanted to add a unique touch to this overall design by applying some edge banding around the edge of this design, giving it a nice little wood accent along the bottom of the dog bowl. And with all of that done, it was finally time to test this out. Here you can see that the system is on and armed by the green and red LEDs on the camera. Here I tried to open the bowl by standing in front of the camera and by moving in front of the time of flight sensor to see if the bowl will open for me, which it doesn't. This is because the camera isn't detecting a dog in front of the bowl before the time of flight sensor detects something in front of the bowl. But when my dog walks up to it, it opens right away. I was actually really surprised at how fast the camera system got a lock on my dog when she approached the bowl. Here you can see what the camera view looks like looking up at my dog from the bull's position. This was great because this meant that my dog could approach the bull and it would open right away for her to get inside. Then if my dog walks away from the bull and the time of flight sensor no longer detects something is in front of it, it'll close by itself. 
Then it'll reopen the next time she comes around. But the real test here will be to see if our little cat burglar can break into this bowl. See what I did there with a, with a cat burglar? You get it? And this was really cool to see because while cats and dogs might share some similar features, the camera system could effectively distinguish between the two. And before you ask, yes, he did get plenty of treats for cooperating in this project. So even while he approaches, the bowl won't open, effectively securing our dog's food. But in this situation, our cat was more interested in exploring the shop than he was trying to break into our dog's food bowl at this stage. All right, you guys, so that's gonna do it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the video and you got a kick out of this project. And if you haven't already, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really means a ton. Because I think now more than ever, we need a little bit more positive, creative content on the internet. And as always, here's your reminder to find a problem in your own life and find a creative way to solve it. So until next time, I'll see ya.